Hello there, this is Dave Allen for Mac Questions and for Amazing iPad. And we're going to have a look at the app called Textastic. And what we're going to do first of all is have a look at some of the special things we've got in there. First of all, that you can notice straight away, is that we have the colour coding of the code. Now you see we've got a hashtag at the beginning there, that means that it's going to be a header. That's header 1. And if it's got uh, two hashtags in there, that means it's going to be a header 2. So that's going to be a header 2 now because I'll put the extra hashtag in there. Underneath that we've got a list, so we have a star followed by a space and then the, the rest of the sentence, that gives us a list. And we can also do, uh, let's just put another thing in here, let's just have a um, hashtag, space bar, um, put some text in there. So as soon as you stop with the text, then you can see it changes colour so that it's the correct colour. It makes it all a bit easier to read, OK? So now what we're going to do is we're going to have a, another list in there, but I have a numbered list this time. So to do a numbered list, you can get the numbers really easy without having to go through this thing here to go to numbers. What you can do is just use these extra keys at the top here, and on the set of number keys over on the side, we just up and to the right, and that gives us a 1, then a space... And then we put our text in for the uh, first line of the uh, list. Then go to the next one. Flick it to the right at the top there. Put in a space. Oops, I'll put too many spaces in there. Let me just go back one. Put in a full stop, then the space. And so on. Now that will give us a numbered list. Let's have a look in the preview and we'll see what happened there. So go to the bottom there, you can see we've got a numbered list, and there is our unordered list with the bullets in there. So that's all pretty useful. Let's just come out of that. Now, one of the really sort of useful things about this is that, uh, for instance, this bit here, what I might want to do is I might want to move the cursor around in the document, and instead of having to just go and find it by touching the place and then moving that around, which sometimes can be a little bit difficult, I find the best way to do this is to use a little tool that comes with this, and it's a cursor navigator. So let's say we want to do some selecting of text. We press that button at the top there, that sets where the start is going to be, and we can go to the left with that, and it will select all that text in there. Let's bring it back one. And then if we want to select further to the right, then we use that button there, and we can go to the right. So where it says and mark down, we have that selected. Let's do a cut of that to cut it out. Now you can use Text Expander with this, and I've got a little thing in Text Expander. So if I type in MDR, it didn't work. <laughs> it should have worked. Let me try again. So if I type in MDR, there it worked this time. That's put in what was in there uh, on the clipboard back in there. Let's just uh, delete that. I'll type in MDR again. And it puts it in again. Let's move this out of the way. I don't need that there for the moment and get rid of that. And that's far, Now that is the first part of doing a referenced link. Now the way that works with Markdown is that if you go to the end of the document or at the end of a paragraph, wherever else you want to put it, and uh, put some things there. If I do the same thing again, MDR, that's the first part of my link. Now if I use the text expander again to use a little uh, clip that I've got there for one of my websites. I can go, let's see, where is it? That, H-A-I. Okay, so now that is going to give me a, that is going to give me a link. So where it says and markdown, that is going to link. That's the bit at the bottom of it where it's referencing to. The reference files I find better work better because you can uh, just read the text a bit more clearly. So let's tap on that. And you can see, and markdown is now a link. So that's one way of doing a link. Let's go back into this again. And the other way of doing it is that if you, instead of putting the square brackets and markdown in there, the way that you do it is you put in the round brackets at either end and you put your link inside it. But as I say, I find that easier to read if you've got it done like that. Now, something else that you've got in this here is a thing called symbols. Now, if I tap on that there... I can get to uh, parts in the text really quickly by tapping on that there. So that's taken me to this getting started within Textastic just by going with these symbols. So anywhere I've got a header in there, it'll take me, it'll list up in this symbols thing. 
Okay, so that's a really useful thing there. Now let's have a look at the find and replace. Um, I can change things in here, so maybe I want to change the word with. And I want to change it to the word blue, for instance, just an example. It's nice that it puts it in there for me, which is quite good. And I click on replace all. So everywhere where the word with was, we have the word blue. You can go into this here and you can say whether you want it to be whole words, whether you want it case sensitive or these other two things there, which are probably more for the programmers of the, the type of users you get with Textastic. So let's see, what else can we do with this? So let's go to this. We might want to copy the generated HTML to put into, maybe we're working on a, a WordPress website and we like to put in the generated HTML. We can use that to get that the HTML which comes from this thing here. We can take it to copy all. Maybe we want to put all of this here and put it into a different document and do some work with it. We can do that. Or we can go to open in, we can put it into pages. We can put it into plain text or we can put it into iThoughts, which is a mind mapping application. So there's a number of different things that you can do with it. For files, now you can get at your files through Dropbox. That's one way of doing it. You can also get at them through iTunes. And in this case, I've got these things out of Dropbox. So if I tap on the button bottom there, go to the file transfer window, and this is my Dropbox connection. And that's all for this first part of the screencast on Textastic. Have a look at the next video and find out what else you can do with this application. Do subscribe to the Wizard Gold YouTube channel so that you know when the next videos are coming out for Amazing iPad, Mac 20 Questions or for Video Magical. And keep up to date so you don't miss any. Bye bye now.